Hey guys, this is Matt from Music World, and today I'm going to show you how to restring an acoustic guitar, more specifically a breedlove acoustic guitar which has a pinless bridge system. You might be familiar with one of these bridge pins. These bridge pins are what anchor down a string in a traditional bridge on an acoustic guitar. Um, the nice thing about the bridgeless pin system is that um, it slides through at more of a horizontal angle, it reduces the string break angle, um, it rests on the saddle a little bit better. Um, and it's also pretty easy to restring. Um, you don't have any problems with the ball end hanging up on the end of the pin as you do with a traditional bridge. A um, couple things we're going to need first. Um, you can use a traditional winder like this. This is by hand. It takes a little longer. Um, I'm going to be using what we use in our shop. It has a little bit for a hand drill. It makes it a little quicker. And then um, we're going to be using these snips. You can use you know, those pliers uh, which have the snips kind of towards the back. Um, these, uh, we'll just cut right through it. That's for getting your tag ends off and cutting your old strings out. So, um, we're going to be using uh, these Diadario EXP 16s. These are a light gauge um, string, and uh, it's what Breathe Love puts stock on their uh, guitars, specifically their uh, concert shape uh, guitars, which this is. This is a beautiful um, organ series. Myrtle wood, Myrtle wood, so that's Myrtle wood top and Myrtle wood sides and back. Uh, it's made in Bend, Oregon. And we're going to restring it with 12s. That's what the EXP 16s are, is a 12 gauge string. And one of the first things that we're going to jump in and make sure that we do is we're going to make sure that we have something to cover up the back end of the guitar. And the reason we want to do that is uh, it helps protect the top from any dents on the ball end as we um, restring it. And you'll see more when we get into it what that is uh, gonna look like. Um, any type of microfiber or cloth over the top works good. There's other little devices you can get that kinda um, sit on it uh, more securely. A uh, cloth works just fine. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the string one by one. Um, typically you always wanna try to go one on, one off, uh, but some people, if they want to oil the fretboard and do a little work on it, will take all of them off. And you can do that, you're probably just going to have to reset your neck action. So if you know how to do that, um, that's fine. Or you can bring it uh, into your local shop, like Music World, and we can set that action for you. So the first thing we're going to do is just wind this sucker down and take it off. Always want to make sure you hold on to the short end as you get towards the end. Um, you get kind of a sharp end of these strings. And if it snaps around somewhere, it can hit you, it can whack your guitar, it can scratch it. Same idea when you're using this. Um, you can cut it anywhere, really. I like to give myself a little room to work with when you push these back. But you always want to make sure you hold on to it either end when you snip this, because that can go flying around somewhere as well. Um, we remove this, and uh, we'll discard it. And then with this end, you want to have your hand ready to receive it, right here. And you want to make sure that that ball end is hanging over the cloth because it can snap down and dent the top. So one thing you have to watch out for these is to keep this nice and close, pull it out, doesn't scratch it, protects it, you're good to go. You can discard that. Uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to put our E string on. We go one in, one out. One little trick to these, uh, two little tricks. First one's going to be, you take this in, it has a slight little notch to it when you put it in from the back end here. So you want to make sure that when you do it, I like to give it just three little notches. It creates kind of like this segmented little uh, angle to it so when you push it through it doesn't hang up and it stays away from the saddle and the bridge. And it's really easy to grab. Hold on to the back end here. As you're coming in, I'm feeding it through with my right hand. I don't want that ball in flopping around because if you pull that through really fast, that's where you can end up having denting. Right now I have it rested against here. Just pull it through and it snaps in. It's nice and snug and you're good to go. That's it. You don't have to worry about getting it seated like you do with a bridge pin. Next thing we're going to do, a lot of people, um, customers will ask, not sure how much winding to cut. You always want to go from the inside out on these and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Um, one of the things you want to do is go out and they say, where do you cut it? You know, 
I always end up cutting it too short and then, you know, I have to buy a new string. Or they have way too much winding on there, you see that, and there's just too much string flopping around on there and it just doesn't hold its tune very well because you have too much string on string. Well, a little trick that I always show is if you take your hand and go four fingers or five fingers, depending on how big your hand is, right at the 12th fret, you pull it snug. It doesn't have to be tight, but pull it snug. On the E strings a little thicker, I'll go four strings. And that's the point in which you clip it off. And you're gonna be assured that you get a couple of good windings on the um, tuning peg here. And some people that's like, oh no, I just cut it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough winding. That's a really accurate way to be able to get that consistently for each one. And then we're gonna switch the direction. Hold down with it, your hand right here. You want to have it cradled in your fingers and your pointer finger gives it some pressure. The way you don't have to tie a knot. Knots, I'm not really a big fan of knots. If you just do this, keep tension on it. It actually is designed to push up against itself and you have no problem getting a good winding on there. You know, one full winding is really all you need. You can get more in there if you want. I like to get it up tension. It's going to stretch a little bit, but can use the other strings as a tuning reference as well. So that's pretty easy right there. That's one full winding plus another half or so. Some, some like to do two to three, or Tech does that. Um, he's been doing it for years, so he can do it pretty much every single time without even having to think about it. Um, you get better at it the more you do it. So we're gonna do the same thing for all of these and uh, repeat the process and we'll, we'll get to the G, the B, and the E string. We'll go to the other side. Sometimes I like to give those a little tug so the angle's coming out like this. Makes it a little bit easier to pull out. Make sure this is up against it. On this A string, you want to make sure, really on all of them, make sure you have the hole going perpendicular to the headstock. Um, that ensures that it's going having a right angle to it. You don't want to have it facing that way because then it doesn't allow it to bite and you don't get a good measurement. Slow consistent pressure helps it wrap on there, you don't have to do it super fast. And as you get that first winding, you just put it right into that nut slot and bring it up to pitch. And there you're there. We repeat and we'll keep going here. All right, so here's where we're at right now. Um, what we're looking at with the uh, first three strings, E, A, D, we got those done. Those are clipped in, didn't take very long. Um, and we got the windings we want on there. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch uh, sides here and we're gonna go in from the E, the B, and the G, rather than going G, B, A. Just a little bit either, easier to move from outside down, kind of like what we did here. Some people don't do it that way, but I like to do it that way. So we're going to reverse it and we're going to give ourselves a little room to work with on this side. So I reach to the end now I have the E which is the smallest. That is the 12 gauge string is why they call this set a 12 gauge set. That's the smallest of the set, and that's the high E string. That one goes in pretty quick and easy. And we go out through here. E 
string is probably the most forgiving as far as slack goes. It's the small diameter string. Now, this one I'll do with my left hand. Once again, pitch doesn't have to be perfect when you're doing that. We're just getting it up to pitch and then it'll stretch in and you can tune it when you're done. This one I stopped a little early because I could feel some pretty good tension on the tuning post here. And uh, I don't want that thing shooting out of there because it's like a needle sometimes, those uh, plain steel. So you can be careful with those sometimes. back to the four or five finger test here. Kind of spread it a little bit. Oops, you wanna make sure it doesn't hang up like it just did there on the post. You wanna get some of that slack out of there. Once again, this one's a smaller diameter string, so you have a little more slack or a little room for error. More so than the wound strings. The diameter on those are thicker. Solid two, three windings, and then it picks up the slack. It's close enough there. Now we got one more to do, and then we're done. You don't have to do this left handed like I'm doing, I'm just keeping this straight for the video. Um, a lot of times I'll flip the guitar the other way so I can use the same hands that I was using for these first three strings. Um, I can do it both. You might try flipping it um, when you're learning how to do this just because uh, it's a little easier and a little more consistent. When we get better at it, you can just reach across and switch hands. But All right, This is the G string. This will be the last one. Holding on to the ball end again, getting it close as possible and then tugging when it goes through. That way it's not loaded with tension. It just slides right in there nice and easy. All right, last one here. Not too much there. Back that off. Maybe right at about there. I give myself a little extra on the far ones like this. Right about there. Make sure it slides into that uh, nut slot there. That one almost got away from me, but should be good now. All right, we're pretty much at tension, not the right pitches, but stretch it out a little bit of the 12th fret and do your usual tuning thing, which really is just gonna be Obviously a matter of uh, stretching it out, putting the tuner on it. Um, throw one of these little snark tuners on here. We'll get it nice and tuned up. That G string likes to go flat pretty fast. So, there you have it. In a nutshell, that's how you uh, change it with the pinless bridge system from Breedlove Guitars. 
And um, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at uh, matt at musicworldstores.com or you can go to our webpage, it's musicworldstores.com uh, or visit our Facebook page. And thanks for watching. Hopefully this will be a little bit of help for you if you have Breed Love or um, a string guitar that's pinless like this. Um, it, it really helps. So enjoy, keep making music. Talk to you soon.